Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, it's uh, we have Paul Koza. Mr. Koza, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm here to discuss the uh, addition I would like to put on my house at Three Megan's Way. It is an a in law apartment for my mom who lives in Wilbraham who uh, would like to come and live with us. I sent um, to the planning board uh, a copy of the preliminary plans we have, uh, the inside and outside, and I had the land surveyed and I had. Um, the uh, abutters list done. Okay. Um, if you would send, you, Mr. Does uh, Bill? Do you have? We have your. We have, we have your email. I right. will. E I will email you an application, Paul. Fill it out and return it to me, and I'll get you. The filing fee is three hundred and fifty dollars, I believe, and uh get me some i you need to get me some pl the plan uh, sets of plans and a copy of the mail and mailing three two sets of mailing labels and i'll eat i'll give you my address you can either drop them off my house or email them or, or physically mail them to me whichever is going to be easier and we'll set up the public hearing for you I'll let you know what it's going to be okay so the um the planning board has the plans to the um, the thing right now. So you need um, uh, what do I what do I pay the fee? You pay the fee to the town clerk. You can just put put it in an envelope with a, with a the application and put it in that box outside the uh, back door. And where do, where do I get the application? I will email you the application. Okay, and that's three fifty. Yes. Okay. So and I think in addition to what you have already sent, which are the floor plans and the, uh, and the elevations, I think we do need the, um, the surface survey that shows where your parking's going to be and setbacks and things like that. Yeah, well, you could just take, you, you probably have a plot plan of your property. You can just write in where your addition is going to be and where the two parking, where the two, two or three parking places will be. You'll also need something from the Board of Health that says your septic system is adequate for, for the addition. What's the um, address again? The parking is going to be on the same um, driveway we already have. Okay. Just you'll just need to put just you can just hand write that on the plot plan that you have in your house. But you'll need something from the Board of Health that says your septic system is adequate for the extra, uh, I, for the extra bathroom. Yeah, I believe the. Um, our builder already looked into that and saw that it was adequate, but okay. Okay. This is three Megan's way. Yes. Yep. Is that any closer to becoming a town road? We'll see what spring town meeting brings. So do we want to talk about setting a date for it or would you uh, rather wait to be sure we get the uh, everything in a timely manner? We can tentatively set a date for let's say the first Tuesday of January. Okay, that would be January 5th. Uh, yes. Does the Board of Health meet tonight? Does anyone no, they, they meet I, Thursdays. Thursdays, okay. So, Paul, that would be one, probably the, the one that would take the most time to coordinate to get that information to us because the abutters list is easy and filling out the application can be done quickly.
If okay. Talking, it, it's a new septic system, so they've reviewed it in the last couple of years. So it, well, it's a large lot, so it will not. Yep. It's not going to be a tight squeeze anywhere. When you get the application, I'll put the I'll put the information on, on the email to you, Paul. What you're going to do with the application, everything else. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm pretty motivated. I'm especially with COVID and stuff. I I um, you know, I, I'm sure I'm like everybody else that wants to do everything yesterday. But I'd like to have my mom closer to our family sooner than later. Cause she is by herself and just worried about her. Understood. Anything else? So what's the date again, Jim, for the hearing? January 5, 2021. One last question for you guys. Is there any, um, I don't, I don't want this thing, it's right now it's about a thousand square feet. Is there any limitations on how big or small it can be with the town? Maximum size of an accessory apartment is 900 square feet. Okay, so you have to get it down to 900. So the, for the plan that you show, it looked like it was much smaller than that. No, I think it was a thousand, the one I showed you. Oh really, it was two floors? No, one floor. One floor? Well, the application, yeah. it can't be larger than 900 square feet. Okay. So, you just have to get us a revised plan that shows 900. Okay. Hey, Paul. Yes? Paul, just call me tomorrow and we can we can clarify everything. I get, I'll put the your addition on the plan when you get it squared away. Okay. And then I'll get it to them with all the information they want. The plot plan stuff? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. Time for a martini. Not <laughs> <Back> the <to> martini. Not <laughs> the martini. That's right. Okay. Made Thank with V one. Made with V one. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a great night. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Mr. Iser, I believe you're next. Yes, uh, I'm here on behalf of Lisa Sanderson at 241 Russell Street, Aegis Physical Therapy, et cetera. Did you guys get the email I sent to you? We did, I did. Yep. So Bill, did you get it as well? Yeah, I did. I did. got it yeah. around to everyone. Okay, great. Just so the issue question. at hand, and... go ahead, Jimmy. How do you pronounce, is, how do you pronounce that, her, her business? Aegis. Aegis, that's the right way to say that word? Yes. So they see it all, everybody has that word all over the place. I've always wondered, what is the right way to say it? <laughs> oh. So Aegis. Aegis. I from the Greek. I from the Greek. Okay. Yes. Continue, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. So the issue at hand is parking and the widening of Route 9. So she's trying to get something uh, in order so that she can go to contractors, excavators, whatever, and get prices so that when the time comes to deal with the state, she's going to know what it's going to cost her to move her parking. And because they're taking, I believe, nine feet in fee, and then another 10 or 11, I can't remember what it is, for an easement. Uh, it's a temporary easement, but she's deeply concerned that they're going to have equipment in her front yard. And if she tries to have conventional head-in parking and have enough place to turn around, it's not going to work with uh, potential heavy equipment in the way. Uh, so th that's why I'm proposing this uh, U-shaped or circular-shaped driveway, if you will, with the understanding that she would have to talk to the state to get a second curb cut. But under the conditions that potentially will be there, this is the only way that parking in, in the front is going to work. 
fee. So just take, how much are they taking in fee? I believe it's nine feet, Bill. And how much in easement for? 11 maybe, something like that. But that's, again, it's a temporary easement, but not knowing how long they're going to be working and on any given day, you're not gonna, she's not gonna know if anybody's gonna be in that easement working. She's concerned that if she has appointments all day long and people can't park, it's just gonna be a huge burden on her business. And I agree with her 100% that it could be. So do you have, do you want me to uh, enable screen sharing? Do you have that to? Well, if you, I don't have it. I, okay. I figured you knew how to do it because I it's certainly enable, I've got a bill. Put, give me, give me screen sharing. I'll put it up. Okay. But the last, Randy, the last time you came to us, I think Jim made the suggestion, we're not going to jeopardize the businesses for parking in the front yard. There's going to have to be some concession on our part, as long as they're not trying to increase the number of parking places. Can you see it now? No. Screen, share screen. And you have to pick the screen. That... Is that up? Not yet. Nope. No. How do I share the screen, Bill? It should give you options. When you click share screen, it should show you different windows and you have to. I have all participants. Oh, okay, I got it. All right, here we go. Um... By the way, in, in ancient Greece, Aegis was something that offered physical protection. In others, the Aegis was a magical protective cloak made from the skin of a goat that had suckled Zeus as an infant. So it comes from the Greek. Well done, Mr. Sarzinski. Thank you. The linguist that I am. Huh? I always, I'm always fascinated by where, where words came from. You got Jeopardy on in the background? I don't watch that much anymore. I, I, not because Trebek died, but my mother was a big Jeopardy fan, you know? You made me miss All the right. final question. <laughs> <laughs> according, to, according to Google, it's Aegis. Aegis. Really? If you trust Google. Probably not. <laughs> I'm going to assume they know more than I do. <laughs> Evidently, it's not letting me. When I put screen share, the PDF is the, isn't opening for me that has it. And it's opening my screen. Hmm. All right, well. Do, do you want to share it from yours, Bill? Did you uh, I don't have it. Um, I, I don't have it on this. I. Um, I'm on my laptop for this meeting. It's on my uh, desktop. Yeah. Huh. Okay, it's, it's not that not that complex. So yeah. So I mean, I I can basically the parking right now is parallel with Route Nine. So starting five feet off of route nine there's i believe there are four spaces between route nine and the building and so that's three of those are or two and a half of those are going to be taken between the the states taking in fee and the easement area so what i've done is turn them to be perpendicular not quite perpendicular to route nine because i've got angled in parking because there's no way that under the, the circumstances with that easement that people are gonna be able to pull in at 90 degrees to the road and then be able to back out without going into the easement. So I've got angled parking where they can go in, pull in and then back out basically the same place they turned in and won't interfere with that easement area. But in order to do that, I have to have an in and an out uh, curb cut. And I've told, I've shown it to Lisa, she's happy with it, but I did tell her she has to go talk to the state to see if they'd be willing to allow a second curb cut for this. And I'm, in, in Joe's words, I think they're gonna have to give some concessions as well. Uh, and I don't think I'm asking for more parking than was there. I, I don't remember, I don't have it with me. 
Uh, uh, but whoever's got it open, you can tell me how many spaces I've I got. Think have five. Okay. So there might be one more. Yeah, I see. It looks like five. It looks like you had four and now you have five. Okay. What if the four was a handicap space? Okay, so so basically right now, I'm, I'm not asking you to approve this. I'm just, the, the concept, do you have any issues with it? Because again, she's got to go talk to the state. And the biggest thing is the state people have come to all the landowners on Route 9 that they're going to take land from and explain what's happening. The next step is for somebody, an appraiser or somebody from a financial department of, of, of the state to come and try to work out a deal with everybody to pay for the land they're taking. And most everybody is going to have a situation where something's got to be moved. For instance, I have three places out front where I sell my used cars and that's going to be right in the middle of, of the bike path. So I've got to push that back. So I had to get somebody to look at it, give me a price to move it. And then I will take that with me when I go to negotiations with the state and say, look, you know, it's going to cost me X amount of dollars to move this. So in addition to what the land is worth, you got to give me this as well. And the, I, I know that's what Lisa's trying to do right now. Uh, but she also wants to make it work in the long run. Um, looks like the sign might have to move. Yeah, the sign, I, I don't know what's happening with that, whether they're going to leave it or not. I, I've looked at the plans hard and it, it appears that it's going to stay where it is. So they're going to have to work around it if they're in their temporary construction easement. Okay. If, the, if the sign has to come out of that easement area, then there's going to be no place to park. Well, it seems reasonable to me. Um, you know, we should me too. Me we, too. Should, we should clarify if she's uh, if she's adding one up to five. Although I, you know, I don't have a problem with that in light of the hardship she's being given. But yeah, I mean, the whole nature of Route Nine is going to change, and if we're trying to keep, if it's a safety issue with the with the five versus the four, then we should stick with the four. But if it's not a safety issue. I don't see anything wrong with five. I mean, route nine as we know it is gone, okay? And it really doesn't matter what you, what happens. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, like I said before, we're not gonna sacrifice, during the COVID, we're not gonna sacrifice farmers and during route nine, we're not gonna sacrifice businesses. They're already hurting, so. Okay, so I will just say to her, move forward, get some prices, and if it all comes to fruition, we'll be back to get uh, formal approval. Sound reasonable? That's fine. Okay. Very good. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good night. That's it. Good night. Thanks, Randy. So uh, Dylan Mance was the next one in. Is he coming from the finance committee or on his own? Oh, Mr. Uh, Mans, you're I'm muted. There? You're muted, Mr. Mans. You're up. I think, you. I think I know what he might be here for, and I, and I was planning on bringing that up later. So maybe we'll just move on to the uh, public hearing. Public hearing. Okay. We will read the public hearing as it appeared in the Gazette. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, November 17th, 2020, beginning at 6.45. Zoom details at the end of the notice. Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Michael and Cheryl Balonis for a special permit to create an accessory apartment at 39 Lawrence Plain Road. Plans are available on request via email to planning at hadleyma.org. Um, details for the dial-up connection will be available on the planning board agenda when posted. 
uh, published twice in the Gazette, November 2 and 9. All of the abutters were mailed a packet that had all of the plans that the balloonists had given to the planning board. So they didn't have to go to the town hall. They did not have to request anything from Bill. Only people that weren't on the uh, abutters lists that didn't receive the actual mailing uh, may have contacted. But other than that, everybody was given to that. And I know I gave a copy of the agenda with Zoom information to a couple of the butters. So they were there asking me, how do we get in touch with I said, when it's posted, I will give you a copy. But I don't see their name on the meeting. So the balloonists are up. You can tell us what you want. If you want, I have the plot plan that Cheryl prepared and get an email to me that shows your plot plan with your parcel and your parking if you want to if you want to put that up. So why don't you tell us what you want to do with it? I'll put that up. First of all, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, uh, yeah, we're looking to build a 900 square foot accessory apartment on with an addition of a garage. Can everybody see it? Yep. Yes. Okay. Just for clarification, this is the house. Existing. This is the addition in the garage. If you draw a line approximately, I think, there, is that about right? Yeah, roughly. This lower portion is the garage, and this upper portion right here will be where the addition is. Continue. All on ground level. Okay. Didn't we have some elevations or something? Yep. That was a while back. Let's see. Let's see if we can get the elevation up there. The elevation of the new construction will match my existing garage floor. Some reason PDFs aren't showing up on my screen share. I'm trying to remember how far back you sent us those plans. Um, was that was that way back in like August or something? Or? The, date, the date of the email is roughly ten twenty eight. Yeah, 1028. I uh, populated the file on 1029 with the emails that came in. So, yeah. For some reason, PDFs aren't showing up as me being able to, to do it. There's the drawings. <laughs> So the stair in the back of the garage, was that storage above the residential? Yes, it would be. Okay. I've got it here. I don't know if you want to, what would you want to see? Can you see it? Probably not. So that's the plot plan, Mike. Right. Yeah, I've got the elevations, but I don't think it's oh, okay. I'm not going to pick it up. I don't see it. Okay, there were there were four uh, four PDFs in that file that yeah. So um, 
but everybody has seen them. Just yes. not remember. Yeah. And we haven't had any pu public comment. So, like I said, a, a couple of the abutters, I, I gave them copies. When, when Bill put the agenda out the other day, I gave them a copy of the agenda with the Zoom, with the Zoom uh, uh, available because they didn't have a computer. They wanted to call in. And I said, call one of these numbers and here's the information. So. The, uh, the new garage doors are rather large, rather tall. Is that for like an RV or? Yeah, possibly. I don't have one yet, but looking to the future. <laughs> Better to plan ahead, yeah. Were those 12 foot doors? 14. 14. We're planning on a 16 foot ceiling height because I have two collector cars and I would like to put a lift in to be able to maintain my collector cars. Not as a service center. Well, what you do on your own property or your own residential property is between you and what you, what the family says you can afford. Between you and what the wife says you can do. Exactly. <laughs> the renderings I see are black and white. Did you have a, I don't remember if you had indicated what the color of the siding was going to be on the. We'd like them. We'd like to match the existing house, which is a what cream color. Uh, cream, yellowish. Okay, okay. It looks darker in the rendering, but that's probably just the graphics of it. Yeah. And I believe when Miss Gay drew it for us, she did it in the gray to depict the new. Okay. It is a small breezeway, if you would, or walkway connecting the existing garage to the new garage. So they are connected. Right, as, as is required, yeah. Right? Any other questions? Comments from the board? Uh, so I have a checklist to go through, and then uh, I'll make a motion. Okay. Um, do we have Board of Health? Is this on septic or sewer? Septic. Okay. Do we have? I, be I believe. Yes, I do. I got the le <clears throat> letter right in front of me. Okay. Signed by Greg Mish on three ten twenty. That the septic plans are adequate. Uh, complete separate housekeeping unit. Only one accessory apartment for dwelling. Site plan shows exterior and interior changes. Um. Uh. Yeah, we have all of the name of the project, location, existing topography. Um, you'll probably have to do this through the building inspector, but uh, we need a uh, control of erosion, dust, and silt during and after construction. But between building inspector and the uh, uh, conservation commission, if they get involved, you'll have to do that anyway. Elevation plans, less not to exceed 900, adequate off street parking, and you'll conform to the building code. Well, you could almost get that flower freezer storage in there for your neighbor. So they get free uh, karate lessons by looking out their back window now. <laughs> That's true, too. They're outside because of the COVID. Right, yeah. I can't hear them from my house, but I can certainly see them. <laughs> yeah. They get quite a crowd sometimes. They, they do. do. <laughs> okay, ready for a motion? We are. I'll make a motion to grant the application for an accessory apartment special permit based upon the following findings. The project is in harmony with the general purpose of the bylaw. The project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. 
Work will be conducted in accordance with the submitted plans, which I will attach to the decision. Um, this approval is for the specific intended use of the premises for an accessory apartment and any other use is prohibited without further approval. Uh, the special permit is automatically revoked if an owner no longer lives on the premises. Um, the accessory apartment shall never be enlarged beyond the 900 square feet allowed by the bylaw. Uh, accessory apartment may not be occupied by more than two adults plus related children. Uh, guests may not stay longer than 14 days in any three month period. Um, an accessory apartment, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Um, the owner must occupy one of the dwelling units. Uh, decision has to be recorded to with the registry of deeds. Um, and um, if it's ever sold, the new owner, in order to maintain the accessory apartment, has to agree to the same conditions. Approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including Conservation Commission and uh, Building Inspector. And any uh, project changes directed by other boards must be reviewed, or must be approved by the Planning Board. And that's the motion. Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Good you. Good luck. Mr. Dwyer will get that typed up. How do you want me to get you to build the uh, mailing labels, Bill? Uh, drop them at the town hall? Yeah, drop them at the town hall, and I'll get the, I'll fish them out of our box. Okay. All right. I'll do that. You want the whole file or just the labels? Probably I should take the whole file. Okay. All right. Very good. So now, yeah, now we're under the 21 day review. Well, well once 21 days from when it gets filed with the town clerk, which may okay. take me a week or so, depending on everything else I've got to do. Okay. So it's not uh, not quite that automatic, but it, it right. should be, you know, you, you should be squared away by mid December. Okay. Not necessarily the best time for pouring concrete, I guess. But. I don't believe we'll be doing anything until springtime. Maybe some site preparation, but other than that, there won't be much going on. Hopefully, the price of building products goes down between now and then, because right yeah. now they're yeah. to say they're out of sight in some things is 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 an understatement. Uh, I've heard that. Yeah. I know. I know that. <laughs> when, I putting, when I started putting my addition on, I was buying a two by six for. Roughly, I don't know, maybe five bucks. Now they're up to like 14. Yeah. And well, that is what it is. We miss the days of Keatsa lumber. Well, I miss the days of Pomeroy lumber too, where it's good stuff and reasonably priced as well. But that's beside the point. Those, those are gone. Yes. Yeah, those are gone. Okay, good luck. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dwyer, do we have anything else? Yeah, a couple of things. So um, just just to be aware, going forward, um, on the agenda item 3A, zoning articles for fall special town meeting, well, that's going to be, um, that is now going to read zoning articles for annual town meeting. And I'm going to add the model floodplain bylaw to that so we can discuss those. Okay. Um, and we did already take up the, uh, we've got to start doing public hearings by Zoom. Um, fortunately, December 1 is a meeting day for us, so we're on time there. But I think we probably should try to get that other one at least scheduled for right. December 1, the other accessory apartment. They can always ask to be, have it put off, but um, <clears throat> Fortunately, I think those three are the only items that we have open. Everyone else had been cooperative about not even filing anything. So no other clocks are ticking. Right. But I know there's a lot of pent up demand out there. Yeah. Yeah, we had, there's a, there's, I know there's a number of people that are kind of chomping at the bit to do something. Now, 
So we, we never actually held the, conducted the public hearing for the, uh, we were going to, I believe for the, uh, what do you call it? Heirloom connection collection. We were going, we had it tentatively scheduled, but they never came back saying that they actually wanted to do it. That's correct. So as I understand it, <clears throat> uh, you know, let's see, which one was air? That's the one, that's the old Sunoco station. Okay. No, I, I, they did come back. We did an amendment of their uh, site plan approval and the, plan. Origin, and the origin of the medical marijuana. So yeah. they're all set. They're all set. Okay, it's, so we only have the Gungersheim, um, Hadley Garage, which I've already emailed Tom Reedy about requesting an extension, a continuance, or we're going to conduct a public hearing on December 1. And Mr. Michelson has already requested a continuance to middle of January. So we're all set for the time being with that one. And we'll get some others, I'm sure, being filed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll let Kevin know that we will, his meeting will be by Zoom because there's no end in sight for the public, for the live public hearings. And he can either request another continuance or he can uh, decide to conduct the hearing by Zoom. I'll let him know. And then I'll let uh, the other, the attorney know for the opposition, best way to put it. Okay. Accordingly. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, let's put them all, uh, let's put those two on for the accessory apartment in Esalon. Let's put them on for the, the December 1st. Okay. And then if they request a continuance, we'll just document that they've requested a continuance. Okay. I don't know. If, I haven't heard anything about any progress with Mass Highway on uh, curb cuts or drainage. So right. we'll find out what's going on. Yeah. Um, the accessory apartment, is that the one on High Meadow or? Yes. Yeah. Gungershine. Yeah. I'm, I, I will try to, I don't know if I have their email. I'll look for, look around. And somehow get in touch with them to let them know they'll, they'll probably want to just have it and move on with it because there's there's i don't think that one is controversial but i don't remember uh i did get a call from a neighbor about it and they were concerned that the uh <clears throat> the people were building before the accessory apartment had been approved but um what was worked out was that um the building inspector let them build an addition but did not let them put in a kitchen right okay so um the, you know the people are yeah. and it's just a matter of getting um basically getting them a kitchen right um i was going to suggest <clears throat> that we write a uh, letter to the select board asking that all of the articles, and this comes under the heading of uh, not within the last 48 hours, uh, uh, and maybe planning board procedures as well, that we write to the select board and request that all articles that were uh, uh, not reached at Saturday's meeting be taken up first in order at the annual town meeting. That's a good idea. It may fall on deaf ears, but at least we're at, we're, we're putting an effort forward. Okay. What does the rest of the board feel on that? Well, that that's that seems like a generous uh, concession on the part of the select board. They probably will should allow it. But uh, I have a question on one of the articles. This is the CPA funding of a hundred thousand uh, dollars coming out of the uh, affordable housing uh, basket in the CPA, but they seem to be forming a, com a committee that's going to distribute that money. Is that going to be working against the affordable care bylaw and the committee that is being set up on our uh, agenda? Affordable housing? Yeah, uh, the affordable housing, you're going to spend $100,000 and there's a, a committee that's going to distribute. They were going to hire a, uh, 
an administrative organization that would that was not that was uh, emergency rental assistance during COVID. Um, it's unfortunate that we didn't get to that during okay. special town meeting because now you know that's what six more months before we can help people who are you know out of work. We must we must be aware of the fact that now the uh, the money that was designated for affordable housing under the CPA money is going to be de dramatically depleted. So, uh, well, it, it just seems to be working contrary to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Well, that actually leads into a related topic. Um, and I did have a call from Amy Feiden, who is both the his, um, CPA and finance committee and she was wondering if there would be any possibility of accessing affordable housing trust fund money for emergency rental assistance which presumably could be accessed more quickly than waiting to uh, annual town meeting now we're not going to discuss this but under heading of future discussion topics, I wondered if there was any interest in asking uh, or calling to, for a meeting of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Committee, which is the planning board plus two representatives from the select board, to discuss what Amy laid out. One, one of the we have I guess any, this is directed to Mark, uh, who is the money going to be allotted to? Is it going to be allowed to the renter or to the landlord? It would be going to the landlord, the owner of a Hadley property. Only one Hadley property? No, any, you know, you can apply as an existing renter. You, you can't move to Hadley to rent because you hear that there's going to be rental assistance. So you have to show that you've, that you've already been here and that you're having trouble paying your rent because of COVID. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, well, has anyone come forward to say that they're having trouble paying their rent? Uh, you would have to talk to Dylan and Molly. They're the they're on the uh, uh, develop. What is it development and economic? No, economic housing, economic economic housing, housing committee. Yeah. Well, why limit to? Why limit it to rent? What if somebody's having trouble paying their mortgage? Mike, can we keep this very limited? Sure. Because sure. we're well, not he's, he's, he's making some this. points. I'm just trying to right raise the we question. Not, I don't think that's fair, Bill. We are not posted for this. Okay. Oh, okay. So under, under the future discussion topics, I uh, just raised the question of whether okay. we wanted to convene a meeting of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Committee perhaps in conjunction with the economic development and housing um, to discuss this as an option. And all of these questions can be addressed within the context of that meeting, but right now we're, we're purely scheduling and we're not discussing substance. That's gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. We want to have town council weigh in on it before we even waste time discussing it with them. We, we do have to have an annual meeting of the Affordable, Health, Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And it probably would make sense to have one in December and call it our annual meeting. Because we were officially organized way back in early summer. So once a, once a calendar year, so we have it in December. We should take care of that. Okay. So let me propose then that a meeting be scheduled. Um, and then we can discuss whether this is something we want to take up or not. That's fine. I think that we probably would be safe having, since the town's on a fiscal year basis, I think we'd probably be safe having the annual meeting anytime between uh, July 1 and June 30th, but, you know, okay. December's fine too. This is when 
if we're going to talk about it at all, this is when it might make a difference. Yeah, chance of the time annual town meeting comes around, there may be, maybe, less of an issue with people not meeting their rent or mortgage. We don't know. I mean, that's just a wild guess at this point what's going to happen in the next after six months. I don't think we can talk about it, Jim. I, I got my opinions. <laughs> okay, well, that's, we will have you a know, if, you, if, you give, if you have money available, people are going to need it. Absolutely. So do we want to set this up as a standalone meeting or would there be any benefit to try to just post it as a joint meeting at our next, uh, so we, we. I think we, we probably want some kind of, a, if not a joint meeting, at least invite somebody to get more information because right now, everything, all the information we're getting is second and third hand. We don't have anybody really telling us what's going on with it. You know, Mark has some knowledge, but he's kind of removed from it and everybody else is just guessing. Who created the committee with Molly and the other guy? Was it the select board? Yes. That was one of Christian's initiatives when he was chair two years ago. Who, who is the two appointees of the select board to our, to this uh, affordable housing trust fund? Do you know? Uh, I believe it is Christian and David. Okay. So looking at the calendar, maybe it would be better not to get it in, get in the way of, we have our own business to talk about, but the, uh, so our meetings in December are the 1st and 15th. And um, so that leaves the week of uh, December 7th as a possible uh, time to schedule the Affordable Housing Trust Fund meeting. Gotcha. So we should, so it'll be our committee and then asking who's on the other committee bill that you know of? Uh, the other one is the, um, sorry, the, the ad hoc housing and economic development committee. So that is, uh, Molly Keegan's the chair. Um, I think she and, Did she and Dylan might be co-chairs. I'm not sure. Well, Christian uh, Stanley is participating in that. I uh, am there on behalf of the planning board. Um, we haven't met for a while. Um, Quick question, Bill. If, if you give somebody money to pay rent, is it considered taxable income to the person receiving it? That's something to think about. Good question. Don't know. Yeah. That might Maybe be Molly factor. knows she's a CPA. That might be a factor in someone's decision to apply for it. Yeah. I know it would be taxable income to the landlord to receive the rent. Right. But um, okay, let me uh, let me see what I can put together for the week of December seventh for a meeting of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And perhaps we can since we're going to, as Jim points out, we have to have an annual meeting anyway. We might as well meet. If we want to invite anyone to join us to discuss other options, we can do that at that time. And then we can run it past town council once we have something to run past town council. Okay. Right, yeah, right now, it's, it's kind of I a big think, what I if. Would, I would agree that it, it seems prudent to me to do that as a separate meeting instead of blurring it with our business, even though we're, what, five-sevenths of the committee. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I'll um, see what, uh, what looks viable in that week, and um, we'll see what we can set up. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to organize, even the Housing Trust will have to organize itself into something. So, okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, so that was uh, asked for first, affordable housing, floodplain bylaw. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that that's all I have. That's all I have. Anybody have anything else? All right. Did we cover whatever Dylan was here for? Oh. 
I was just here to observe. Okay. Okay. Are you observing from Hadley or someplace else? I'm just curious. From Hadley. Okay. I'm a resident. Okay. Anything else? We're all Got set. Nothing. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Stay oh, healthy. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Stay well.